Hey, this is Brennan. I wanted to show you guys some of my favorite Logic Pro workflow tips and shortcuts. So let's get right into it. All right, the first one is Command U. And so you can select any region. And if you hit Command U, it'll automatically create a cycle for what you have selected. So if I go to this little guitar part and I hit Command U, see how it just made a little cycle region up there. So that's really handy if you you know quickly want to work on a part rather than going to the top and trying to drag this little uh, bar up here you can just select the region hit command U and then start playing so okay the next one I have is command A and then pressing Z so if you're like pretty deep into the project um, sometimes you want to get zoomed out so you might hit command and the arrows or something like that and it takes a while to zoom all the way out. So what I like to do is I hit Command A to select every track and then I hit Z and that just pulls me back to like a bird's eye view of the whole project. So it's a very quick way to you know see the full project. Um, again that's Command A and then Z and then I just click anywhere to get rid of the the highlighted sections. So alright the next one I have is Control Option and then dragging so if you hit control option you see the mouse changes to a magnifier and from here I could just draw a nice little rectangle over what I'm trying to work on and then you let go and it pulls it you into that and so you could keep going further as well like if you need to get really tight in there um, and then similar to that you can hit control option and then click and it'll cycle you back out of that that zooming that you did so if I do control option and just click instead of drag it just bounces you all the way back out it just reverses what you did so I use that all the time sometimes I do the command A and then Z or sometimes I just you know I just cycle back out or whatever so uh, the next one is using the greater than and less than keys to move around the project so I think when you're starting out you kind of um, you might just click up here to move around the project but it's really handy if you hit those keys you can go left and right and even cooler if you hit shift and then the greater than or less than it'll go eight measures so it's a really quick way to bounce around the project I use that all the time I really the goal with all of this is to use the mouse the least amount as possible so if I can quickly from the keyboard you know move a couple measures or move eight measures to bounce around the whole project um, that's super handy the next one I have is a custom key command this key command allows me to very quickly open up an instrument so if I go to like a software instrument and I hit shift Q it opens up that instrument so normally you'll be moving the mouse all the way over here and you'll hit this small little section to open up the instrument um, but instead I've set it up to where you can do shift Q open and close it so it's a really quick way to bounce around and I'll show you guys really quick if you go to option K that'll open up your key commands and if you search for open you can see all these I have set up and the next one which is related to this as well is using a custom key command to open up the plugin windows and you can see all of these I've set them up to shift 1 through 9 so let me close out of this um, see I've got see four plugins right there so if I go shift 1 it'll open that first one second one third one fourth one and that is super handy to quickly um, open those up make changes and close them really quick rather than again moving the mouse all the way over here and finding that and hitting that little section right there that saves me a ton of time the next one I have is sort of more of a workflow thing um, and that is I use gain all the time rather than um, tweaking the fader now I use the fader some because the higher you are on the fader the more detailed and fine-tuning it is but um, for major volume changes or anything like that you can see like I do a lot of gain I just throw gain in there anytime I need to get louder or quieter 
and then I'll make small changes or sometimes no changes on the fader. So you can see here I've got game plugins on this track. And the other cool thing about it is you can automate those gain plugins. Um, that way it still frees up the fader so that any time you could still uh, make volume changes without messing up your automations. Um, the next one I've got for you guys is saving channel strips and making folders for those channel strips. So if you go over here to the settings on this track, on this channel, you can see I've made a couple folders and I do the same thing for software instruments. Like if I make a preset, I usually don't save the preset and the synth. I'll save the whole channel strip with all the plugins and everything with like the sound that I that I made. So what you would do is say you build like a really cool sound right here. It's like a lo-fi lo-fi sound. Um, but if I wanted to save that you know just go to setting save channel strip setting as and then in here I've made folders so like you could make a guitar folder and call it like low fi guitar and then you'd be able to instantly recall that in another session if you made a cool sound that you like so I've been using that a lot more lately okay the next one is sort of a another kind of workflow thing um, if you hit F on the keyboard, it opens up the file browser really quickly. And I've made a folder up here, so samples, and then it's very special sounds. And these are sounds that I just really like. That way, I'm not digging through my thousands of kick drums when I need a kick drum. I've got like 50 to 100 that I just really like, and I put them in that folder. If, I, if I'm looking for something... Uh, maybe sort of weird or a little different. I'll go through my giant sample library, but having having these folders set up right here really saves me a lot of time and allows me to, you know, if I need a, a cool snare drum, I just boom. I've probably got like a hundred or so right here ready to go. So that's kind of a workflow thing that I use a lot. Okay, the next tip and the last tip I have for you guys is using folders for plugins. So if I go over here to this track um, and I want to add like a plugin to this track, you can see I've made all of these custom folders for myself and they're all caps. So I went in and I deleted all of the ones that Logic made by default and I made all of these. So the first one I've got here is gain so I can quickly do some gain staging and then I kind of made folders in the order that I usually add stuff. So the next one is EQ. These are all my favorite EQs. Effects, you know, a bunch of cool sounds in there. Um, vocals like Melodyne and stuff. Um, delay, reverb, etc. But I think it's really helpful rather than if you look here at the waves. You've got tons of plugins and it'll take quite a while to go through all that. So. Um, and actually, one other tip that I just thought of that came out in the new, I think it was 10.4.5 update. Instead of clicking up here to move the playhead, if you do shift and then click anywhere, it'll take that playhead wherever you, you click. So then also, if it's moving already, yeah, you could just shift and click. But if it's not moving already and you wanted to just have it start playing, you could shift and double click and it'll start playing. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or any tips that you really like, either like a workflow thing or a shortcut, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you guys as well. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. But yeah, thanks for watching.